please marry me? A young woman asked an armored knight. Oh, how her heart resonates. Heat enough to burn. Her blood is razor sharp. Alas, the knight declines her confession, for he has vowed to never fall in love again. I understand, she responds. Then, let's get married. Wait, did she even hear what he said? Apparently she did, but she still dares to ask and not care. She even adds that it is an absolute certainty that marrying her would be much more fun. Despite her brimming confidence, the knight remains firm with his answer, no. Later on, three people are fighting monsters inside a dungeon, and this trio includes the two from earlier. The knight is Rushian, and the young woman is Akko, and a young man named Shwain is with them. Rushian takes a lot of damage, so Akko tries to heal him. But this gains her the monster's attention, so she desperately uses her wand to get them away from her. And sadly, it ain't working. But before one of the monsters can smash her to the ground, Rushian saves her, driving the monsters away from her and directing their attention to him. Another one of their companions, their master, defeats the monsters using his magic. Sadly, Arushian gets caught up in the attack, so Akko tries to bring him back using a spell called Revive. Once he's up, Akko hugs him, apologizing. But he waves the apology away, saying that what's done is done. Thank you very much, Rushian. I love you. Akko tells him with a smile. Uh, yeah. And we see a guy playing on his computer. As it turns out, all of these events are actually part of an online game. On the next day at school, Hideki Nishimura, who is Rushian in real life, announces to his friends that he has found a wife. <laughs> it changes every three months, doesn't it? You're just talking about a waifu, aren't you? As you can see, his friends aren't enthused. This takes the wind out of Hideki's sails, telling them that it's not like that. And one of his friends then asks him if he's got any anime recommendations, making him perk up. Of course, Hideki tells him about one and is all excited. But his friends treat it as a trap, because they can't help but tease him. You are really hardcore, huh? There's no hiding it. One might even say you're an open otaku. His response? Yeah. So what? I still enjoy it. Leave me alone. Gross. Akane Segawa chimes in. Akane tells him that she finds otaku appeal positively disgusting. Nishimura explains that there are wine otakus, flower otakus, and many other great otakus worldwide. But Akane doesn't care. She still thinks Hideki's disgusting. Ugh, a bit mean much? What's with the hostility? Let people enjoy things, girl! His friends defend him from her. Saying things like, hey, lay off of him. Stop telling the truth. We think so too, but still. <laughs> Jesus. Are they really defending the guy or are they just adding fuel to the fire? Hideki exclaims that his friends are even meaner. Poor guy can't even trust his friends to have his back. Their teacher then arrives at the classroom to announce that there will be an all-school assembly that day and ask them to head to the gym. As they're going to the gym, the four friends talk about a guy confessing to his crush, only to crash and burn. Dang. Ouch. And Hideki knows how that feels. One of Hideki's friends tells him that he seems to go for girls like Segawa. He responds that if she were Sundere, that would be fine. But she's all Tsun, and not a whole lot Dere. Unfortunately for him, Akane has heard it and threatens to kick his butt. He backs away, saying that she's totally serious. Due to this, a girl bumps into him, or he bumps into her. Anyway, he apologizes asking if she's okay. The girl who has her hair all over her face only says, Oh, no. And then runs away. At the gym, he gazes in the girl's direction and she averts her eyes. The school council president, Kyo Goshin, speaks in front of the whole student body. Later that day, Hideki logs into the game after coming home from school. The game that they play is an online RPG called Legendary Age, or LA for short. In other words, it's a net game. Parts of it do cost money, but the basic gameplay is free. Multiple people access it at the same time, and they can all have adventures in the same world. As he's facing a bunch of monsters, Rushian's guildmates are in a corner, hearing Akko talk about how she declared her love to him on a pier over a romantic lake. Shuan comments that for him to make a girl say it, he must be a pretty big wuss but Rushin is still surrounded by the monsters. Meanwhile, Akko is still showing off a ring that Rushin gave her, 
and it increases all resistances. Despite it all, Rushian still ends up getting beat up by the monsters. As they're resting in their inn's dining area, Akko asks Rushian if he's alright. He replies that he's not, mostly because of her. She misses her targets and heals the mobs instead, and she gets caught up in chatting and winds up getting lost. Do you know how many times I've died because of your mistakes? He asks her. So she apologizes to him, but he says his experience level is barely on the plus side, so I guess it's okay. Despite the constant scolding on Akko, he's still soft for her. But Shuang takes a hit on Rushian. Tanking is an armor knight's job, so even if he dies, it doesn't affect Shuang's bad self. Of course, this annoys Rushian, and he rebuts, If only our attacker is a little more skillful, it wouldn't matter. Before it can escalate though, Master tells him to leave the Annihilation to him. After all, he has the pricey, real money buffing items. Lousy premium player, Russian and Shuang disgustedly say in unison. It's been almost a year since the four of them formed their guild, Alley Cats. They've been through a lot together, and they get along well. And being together, of course, is fun. And Akko, well, she she's his waifu, and he couldn't bring himself to turn her down the last time she proposed. As unlucky with girls as he is in real life, well, in that world, he has a wife. Shuang says he must be a normie and shares that he recently had someone declare their love for him in real life. This catches the other's attention, and Rushian thinks that Shuang must really be a looker. Akko though, who seems like she's in a trance, says that normies can just die already. People who get confessed to ought to get out of the game. And as Akko creepily goes on a long rant about how normies aren't welcome in the game, Shuang says that he said no and that his bad self isn't interested in romance. Rushian shakes his waifu out of her scary state. It's really not scary, but more like creepy. Eh, well, fortunately he succeeds, and the girl apologizes to her guildmates. Now it's Aqua's turn to speak. Rushian rejected her love-filled confession again and again, apparently. The stress was shortening her life at max speed. She proposed to him ten times, and he turned her down. Each time. Shuang asks Rushian why he didn't agree, and he replies that in-game marriages were something that turned him off. Shuang said that it's not like he could get married in real life anyway. Oh, ouch. Wow. And he says, might as well go through it in the game. Akko then shares that she heard Rushian once petitioned for marriage there in LA. The others are surprised, while Rushian is mortified. He scolds his waifu. Well, how could she let that out? After all, it's a secret. But now the master is extremely interested and asks him to spill. Rushian recalls asking a player named Nekohime to become his in-game wife. But the girl declines and admits that she's a guy in real life and an older one at that. She, or he, explains that she just got caught up in it and wanted to try a little online cross-playing. Rushian is so affected by this that he swears to never trust another girl in an online game again. After hearing this, Master and Shuang laugh their hearts out. Rushian then adds that the shock that he got from that incident was so great that he left the guild he was with and stuck with solo play for nearly a year afterwards. Then he arrived at a certain truth. Who cares? As long as they're cute. Cause like, even if they are guys in real life, who cares as long as they're cute? Ultimately, it was the cuteness of the game that he enjoyed. Aku asks Rushian if he's angry and thinks that maybe she shouldn't have told everyone. He once again waves the apology away, making Akko happy. She hugs and whispers, I love you. In real life, Hideki is blushing, trying to calm himself down. He reminds himself that it's not real. He got too much into it before and look what happened to that. Akko tells him that she's a girl, and in real life she's a nerdy book girl type. Shuang says that admitting that in open chat is the greatest net taboo there is. Master, or Apricot, says that taboos are so ridiculous. For instance, he's a normal high school girl in real life. His fellow guild members don't believe him, of course. So he proposes a guild Alley Cat's first ever offline get-together. And so on the day of their IRL gathering, Hideki arrives at their meeting place first. A few moments later, a very shy girl approaches him and introduces herself as Akko. Once Hideki confirms that he's Russian, she immediately gets past her shy demeanor and clings on him. Wow, Russian! It's the real Russian! 
Well, she's acting just like how she does in-game. Hideki tells Aku to stop calling him Rushien. Cause like, what if someone hears... Rushien? A girl says. Hideki turns to see Akane Segawa, of all people. Soon enough, the student council president, Goshoin, arrives. In-game, she's the guild alley cat's master, Apricot. Which means to say that Akane is Shwain. It turns out Hideki is the only guy in his guild. Huh, who would have thunk? And so they go to a cafe and start their offline meeting by introducing themselves. Kyo Goshoin goes first and speaks like a true school council president. Next is Akane, who is a little reluctant to introduce herself as Shwain. Kyo then remarks that she understands that Akane is embarrassed to go by that name in front of others. After all, in German, Schwein means pig. This is news to Akane, so of course, she's mortified. Kyo asks if she didn't know all this time. So she said that she just used the name because it sounded so cool. You know, like a liar. After that, Hideki introduces himself, and next is Akutamaki. The others are surprised that she used her real name, which confuses her. Hideki tries to explain net literacy, but of course, never mind. It turns out everyone goes to the same school. Ha! Huh, what are the odds, right? Aku says she's not involved in any clubs, and she doesn't have any friends at school either. Sometimes when she goes to school, it gets the attention of others. Everyone is surprised to hear this. But then Kyo says that it's okay. She's a student council president and she doesn't have any friends either. Hideki tries to make her feel better by saying that they're all her friends. Akane joins in. Aku thanks them and says that she's really glad to have friends that she can talk to. Hideki talks about how some guy at school confessed to Akane. This sets off Ako again, going into her scary normie trance. Akane reminds them that she declined, saying that she would have less time to play net games if she had a boyfriend. Ako then suggests an idea. Shwain, whom she calls Shichan, could always get married in the game, like she and Rushian did. She wouldn't lose any gaming time and be with the one she loves. It's like hitting two birds with one stone. Akane replies, I think I'm good. Sounds pretty gross. Hideki says that he still can't believe that Ako is his waifu. Alley Cat's guild is still in the cafe, having his first offline meeting. And still clinging to Hideki, Ako remarks that their guild master is actually the school council president. Akane seems surprised to hear this as she heard that the student council president's father is one of the schools. Yep, and Kyo confirms this, that he's on the board of directors. Hideki then asks her if she's from a rich family, and she replies, Well, not really. Quote unquote. At best, her family only owns a handful of companies and schools. Uh huh, and that's not rich by her standards? Now, with this information, Akane finally understands how she can spend so much in game. Her family is pretty rich. Kyo refutes this and clarifies that the money she spends on the game is money that she earned herself. She did borrow the seed money from her parents, though, but she paid it all back. Well, people who are promised fortune in the future can all just die. Aku suddenly interjects, and the dark aura present again. Now, her guildmates can only stare at her as she laughs maniacally. Thankfully, Hideki shakes her out of it. And now back to her usual self, I hope, she apologizes. I lost my head a bit there. <laughs> Akane waves it away as she has the same reaction. But Kyo shares that she comes from a strict home. They even chose her friends for her. But they let her play net games, so she met all of them. But she has zero friends in real life. And at that, Aku comes up to her, clasps her hand, and tells her that they should fight those normies together. The side paints Akane and Hideki. Their conversation turns to their common denominator, games. Akane believes that the most important thing is having a powerful weapon. Spending money to buff your armor is inefficient. Hideki has another opinion and speaks up about how armor is important. The hurdles required for choosing your armor are higher than for weapons. The two have a heated argument about this. Kyo tries to interfere, but they tell her off in unison saying, You stay out of this, you wallet warrior! She tells them that, what an awful way to treat your master. Aku chimes in and says that if she were to spend money, it would be on appearance. She can leave everything alone and the rest of them will eliminate everything. Hideki and Akane obviously do not seem pleased with her opinion. But then Kyo chimes in that Ako is their healer so she can agree with her thinking on defensive gear. Now Hideki says that as the main tank, he can hold his own. Their healer sucks at her job which is why armors are so important. 
Both Akane and Kyo agree with his assessment. And Ako, their terrible healer, pretends that she doesn't hear anything. Before parting ways, Hideki apologizes to them for thinking that they're all guys. But then, Akane threatens him to not act so chummy with her in school. After that, they all go home. And with Ako and Nishimura walking down the same path together. He tells her, in all honesty, that he thought she might be an older man. She asks him why he agreed to marry her in game if that were the case. He thought that even if she were a guy, that's, that's kind of cool. But then he immediately tries to reassure her and that he doesn't mean it like that. The game and reality are two different things. So even if she were a guy in real life, in the game, she's still Akko. She asks him, So, what you're saying is age, looks, gender, and all that didn't matter. And you were just nice enough to start liking me. Is that it? He replies with, Yeah, that's, that's right. She feels overjoyed to hear this, and says she wanted to be with him because he was Rushian. And even if Rushian wasn't a boy the same age as her, or whoever she thought he was, she definitely loved him. Hideki thanks her for that, staring into each other's eyes for a bit. But he breaks it to remind himself that the game and reality are separate. Later that night, Hideki and his guild play LA as always. Before logging off, Shuen reminds Rushian not to act so chummy at school. Aside from that, he shouldn't act too familiar with Akko as well. It really might start a lot of rumors. Rushian agrees to all of this, and they all log off. Now on the next day at school, Akane awkwardly greets Hideki. Soon enough, she reverts to her usual self, acting hostile towards him. As he's talking with his friends, Akko, who's from another class, arrives at their classroom and calls out to him using his L.A. name. One of his friends asks him, what's a Rushian? Hideki pretends that he doesn't know. Akko approaches him as he panics and wonders how he should handle the situation. In a similar boat is Akane, who is terrified beyond words. Her double life might be exposed. Hideki tells Akko to stop calling him Rushian. She says out loud that they didn't get to stay with each other for very long last night. Obviously, the whole class hears this and they all go, Eh? Hideki tries to horribly defend himself, saying that she doesn't mean it that way. But one of his friends asks about their relationship. Hideki tries to tell Akko not to answer that question, but obviously it's too late. Rushian is my dear husband, Akko tells him. Of course, to Hideki's despair, uh, the scream of embarrassment and torment. Music to my ears. Kidding. Akane approaches them and says that to take their otaku talk outside. Shuen is really hell-bent on keeping her true nature secret, huh? Much to her and Hideki's horror, Akko calls Akane Shichang. And she continues to say, Shichang, you're in the same class as Rushian, are you? How oh, nice. Akane replies that she doesn't know what she's talking about, but they should take it all outside. But Akko doesn't seem to read the room and ask if Akane is angry because she didn't call her Shinchan. Of course, this sends Akane further into despair, so she finally drags Akko outside with Hideki following. Finally, outside, Hideki explains to Akko that Rushian and Shuen are only their names in the game and that she should consider the time and place. Akko replies that to her, her friends are Rushian and Shichan. Akane then says that they're not playing the game right now, right? Hideki then tells Akko that the game and reality are different, but she asks why that is. The two are surprised to hear this. Akko starts crying, thinking that they're not really friends with her. But then Akane clarifies that what they mean is that they don't like using their game names in real life. She adds that at school, she's passing as someone who would never play games. Seemingly understanding what's happening, Akko asks what she should call her then. And she replies that she can just call her Segawa or Akane. Hideki tells her to call him Nishimura. As they talk with Akko, they realize one thing. Akko struggles to differentiate between the game and real life. And so they inform Kyo of the situation. And she finds it hilarious. Akane and Hideki don't share the same sentiment though. Kyo tries to explain to Akko that the whole husband and wife thing is all confined within the game. She doubts that she found love with someone whose name and face she never knew. But Akko opposes this, saying that it is because she didn't know him. She said that she came to like him because their hearts touched each other. It's a much, much purer love than the normies around them. 
Kyo then tells Hideki, I think Aka really does purely like you for who you are. He insists that in the game, it's all jumbled together with the character's appearance and stats. On top of that, he's always looking after Akko, so she thinks more of him. Akko said that it's not that. She sometimes played the game with other people, but they all left her right away. But Rushian? He stuck with her the whole time, and that's why she loves him. After hearing this, Akana decides to leave, but Nishimura stops her. She tells him, don't talk to me, you hookup troll! The two have an argument again, and Aku asks Goshin what's a hookup troll. The president and guild master explain that a hookup troll is someone on net games looking for impressionable girls. Hideki decides that he's gonna change Aku's mentality. He tells her that the game and reality are separate, and they will make Aku understand that. Kyo says that they just have to make her realize the game is not reality, adding that they just leave everything to her. After a while, Kyo shows and creates the Modern Communication Electronic Game Club, or the Net Game Club for short. She's the club president, and the others are its members. Their club activities will primarily be after-school online gaming and offline parties on their days off. Akane Koma said this is too funny. Kyo added that she decided it on lunch, already has the computers installed in their club room, and of course, enrolled them as members. Ako, however, is impressed by Kyo's fine work. Akane comments that they can consider this as making a net game club and playing net games. Ako is excited at the prospect of them being able to play together. Akane prepares to leave, but Kyo prevents her from doing so. Akane explains that she's fine with just playing net games as a regular hobby, but Kyo asks her, Aren't you the one who said that you wouldn't want a boyfriend because it would cut your login time? If she extends her playing time by two hours, just think of how much more you can earn in one day. Akane, however, just wants an ordinary high school girl's life at school. Kyo tells her that she'd quickly get out-leveled by the rest of them. Their grinding spots will change and Shuin won't be able to play with them. Hideki and Akko are already checking out the gaming PCs and he comments that the PCs are built only to play net games. Kyo asks, Come to think of it, Chuen, your PC was fairly underpowered, huh? Akane replies that it was a hand-me-down, and the student council president tells her that she's free to use the gaming PCs in the club room. In the end, Akane agrees to join the club, but in exchange, she gets to do whatever she likes with the PC. Ah, the power of peer pressure. Hideki asks Kyo why she went through the trouble of making the club, and she replies that it is for him and Akko. They have to show Akko the difference between the game and reality. The characters in the game and the people in the club exist simultaneously. These are the best circumstances if they are to show Akko the differences between the game and reality. Hideki likes this idea, and it can show that he is a pathetic jerk in real life and that would shatter Akko's idealistic dreams about him. But our Akko disagrees with this. She'll show him her love runs deeper than that. As the two bicker, Kyo and Akane just look at each other. Later that night, Rujian logs in and realizes his guildmates aren't in yet. That's when he comes across someone he hasn't in a while. Nekohime. The Alicats Guild meeting up in real life is just the start of their journeys. Helping Akko distinguish between game and reality, Akane's facade, and whatever Kyo has going on, and Hideki's own hangups, from his new IRL friends, his clingy waifu, to Nekohime coming back, he is surely in for a wild ride. Good luck, buddy. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.